Welcome to Gim Crack Video. How may I help you? Hey, what's going on, man? Um, you got anything new to watch? No, but we are running a special on sequels. Is is that over there on that shelf that says that it's a not for human consumption? No, it's the one over there. And actually. Doesn't it seem like we have the same conversation every week? And where's the other one? You know, the little guy who dresses like a Muppet on a 90s sitcom. Well, uh, you know, funny you should mention that. He was he was visiting me in Portland, and I stopped by the hotel he was staying at. Uh, we had a couple of drinks at the hotel bar, as one does. And um, so there we were. We were getting girl drink drunk. Patrick starts going on saying he's worried about the hotel elevator. He, he goes on yelling, if you can't trust elevators, who the fuck can you trust? And he sees a sign that says, only one person at a time. It creaks. There's an evil laugh. It smells like piss. No one likes riding the piss evader. Yeah. And I, and I say, man, we live in a vertical world. Deal with it. Bad idea. You can only ride the piss evader once. Yeah. Um. So anyway, we he gets back to his room. The lights are flickering. I hear him screaming. There's blood in the lobby. And I thought it was just an elaborate prank or something. But that was four days ago. I mean, it's kind of over the top. And Patrick did say no bits. He promised no bits. So it's not a bit. And we started the apocalypse at least twice. Uh, so I was kind of hoping that maybe you'd seen him. Because, you know, we were going to watch a, do our normal thing. Watch a movie. Do a podcast about it. Yeah, I, I haven't actually seen him around. Uh, but uh, what movie were you looking for this time? Maybe I could help you with that. We, we watched it, but it wasn't, it wasn't one that you have on your shelves. It was uh, Hotel Inferno 3, The Castle of Screams. And you don't have it. You, you haven't seen it on my shelves? That's, that seems strange. Let me look through my catalog real quick. You said Inferno Screens? Yeah, Hotel Inferno 3, Castle of Screens. I mean, you, you claim to be a connoisseur of films, and you've never heard of Hotel Inferno 3? That probably explains why you don't have any customers in here. I do just fine. It's a slow night. I'll tell you what, I have a copy here that, uh, that I did watch with Patrick and... I'll, I'll make a deal with you. If you watch this movie with me and talk about it, but if just one single customer comes in, we can completely stop. And I'm confident that we will not be interrupted. I see. I accept your challenge. So that was uh, that was Hotel Inferno Part Three. So uh, so to Kim Crack, uh, have you ever heard of the uh, Hotel Inferno movie series at all? This particular one was um, lost on me. I have not heard about this franchise before. Somehow. Hmm. Okay. Well. Um. Well. Well. Welcome everybody to the Found on Shelf podcast. Uh, my name is Dustin, and today we are watching Hotel Inferno three. And um, I'm not sure if you heard the conversation I had earlier with Gimcrack, but um, yeah, Patrick's missing again. There was an elevator screaming, blood. Also, we'll we'll figure it out later. Don't worry about it. Um, it's weird that we never seem to be on the show at the same time. Uh, that 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 does happen. I don't. I mean. Maybe he's allergic to you? This is my second time on your show, and I have to say, it's not any better. You know, I mean, I think it's it's slightly better than the other one. Uh, well, there was background music. I will give you that. There are lots and lots of background music this time. <laughs> well, let me tell you a little bit about the uh, the Hotel Inferno series up until this point. So this... These uh, these movies, um, if you're familiar with like uh, what's that movie called, Hardcore Henry, I believe it was. Um, mm, it's yes. all told like a first person shooter, so it's like you're playing a video game when you're watching it. So the main character of this movie is you. So Kim Crack, you are a movie star. Yes. Um, 
I, I, star is kind of a, a strong word, given what we've seen. Yeah, well, you, you, you might be right there. So um, would you like me to tell you what parts one and two are about, or would you like to do the elevator pitch first? Let me, let me give you my pissivator pitch, and then you can tell me where the hell this came from. So if one were to... Hmm, how should I put this? This is a Game Informer-ass movie if I've ever seen one. Um, <laughs> the little bonus disc that you got with the magazine. <laughs> precisely. You get this in the back of a magazine in 1998. If you like to see a movie like that, this is it. Hotel Inferno 3 is their attempt to turn Doom into a feature film without The Rock. Hotel Inferno 3 is what you get if someone saw God of War and thought, hmm, well, I like the part where he beats stuff up, so let's keep that. Um, <laughs> Hotel Inferno 3 is, um, it, it does well with its budget, I'll say that. Yeah, that's a good, that's a nice, that's a nice positive uh, that's rather, rather positive of you there, Kim Crack. You know, I, I like to think of myself as an optimist. Hmm. You sound like it constantly. Mm, yes. uh, well, I don't have a trailer for this movie, primarily because the only the trailer was just a bunch of music and it made uh, no sense. A lot it of heavy metal. Mm, yeah, yeah, you'd think. Yep, yep. It's slow jams, R&B, you know. This movie starts with blowing up a beholder. Yes. So a non copyright infringing beholder adjacent monster. Yeah. So so let me tell you what happens in the first two parts. So you're all caught up to where you're at. As I'm sure it's very important. Um, it's it's kind of interesting, but part one starts off kind of completely different. Um, he's just a the main character is just a hitman, and he's got these glasses on that have this cool little heads up display, and he was sent to a hotel to go and and take out these people. Is that what HUD stands for? Yes. Oh. Yeah. I've always been curious. Well, now you know. Hmm. I'm, I'm glad to inform you of something that's happened in the last, I don't know, 40 years. Um, listen, listen. Hmm? As far as I'm concerned, video games stopped at Pong. Mm, that's kind of where they started. Um, so, all right. So, yeah, he's he's a hitman. He's hired, and he's hired to go in and kill uh, people. And it turns out the people he's killing work for the same company that he does. And uh, it's just a bunch of evil, demonic creatures and he travels through the hotel and it's just full of evil shit going on and yeah it's it's kind of the it's it's like the demons are in the hotel done uh part two he starts off in hell uh where he's got the witch next to him and he's, he wants to come back and meet his wife and resurrect her which i don't know when she actually dies because it's kind of unclear but uh he needs to get the element of fire so it's basically like your typical video game just like kind of this one was you go through you got a couple of mini bosses to fight then you get to the main boss and you get the prize which in the second one was the element of fire and um that pretty much brought us right to the beginning of part three so the they're all first person pov films correct mm -hmm. or kind of like in a violent nature very violent very bloody very gory Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay. If we're going down the line and we start with the element of fire and we mm -hmm. follow it up with the element of ice and apparently these movies have an operating budget but not too much of one so as to be prohibitive from making three of the fucking things. If there are three of these movies that goes to show that they'll probably turn out one or two more. My question is at what part of the film franchise going down the elemental order do we get to the power of heart? Um, I think you're thinking of Captain Planet. Right. Is that... Is that We're the planeteers, is, you can be one too. Is that not accurate to the Greek conception of the elements? Well, I mean... Um, I mean, I th mean, there was a movie called The Fifth Element. Was that not hard? It, I, I didn't watch it. Why Why didn't you? It, you? it didn't seem like it was up to the kind of quality that I expect from a film. Mm, okay, yeah, it probably wasn't as uh, good. Anyway, um... So you 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 did mention that they are uh, they are in the works of a of a part four. Um, it is in pre production right now. You can actually go on their website and help uh, help fund it if you'd like. Um, but they're also working um, on parts uh, <clears throat> five and six. Uh, so 
Yeah, they got a couple ideas. Have they disclosed any of like the subheaders, the titles of these franchises? Because this was Castle of Screams, which really doesn't translate to Ice Blasted Wasteland. What's the next one called? Well, the next one is going to be called the... It's it's weird because it does not say it's Hotel Inferno Part 4, so they kind of went a little bit different. It's just called uh, Pentacolum, the Forest of Decay. Oh, uh, see, I was thinking it was going to be called Hotel Inferno 4. Come on in to the Happiness Hotel. That 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 might make for good bonus footage. Could you imagine a Muppet rail shooter? <laughs> <laughs> like House of the Dead, but you're blowing up the felt heads of these little mm, puppet creatures. That would be fun. House of the Dead meets Meet the Feebles. Mm-hmm, exactly. Hmm, okay, I could go for that. House of the Kermit. House of the Kermit. The plan is for six movies total, because you had the first one, and then he's got to have the five elements. So, and, and I, it's a mystery as to what the rest of the elements will be, but uh, you know what? You're probably not far off with, uh, <laughs> with Heart being the last one. I, I mean, it's right there. It's it's classic literature. You just you just have to respect the, the authorial sources from which you draw. Captain hmm. Planet. That's it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Voltron, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> Is he going to turn into something at the end? It could be, you know, if you if you find someone's like, Voltron's really about like the power of companionship and teamwork and working together. It's like Voltron's like one team, one dream, you know, it's, it's really just coming together, finding synergy and, and, and developing new ways to facilitate the process. However, if we were looking for more combat oriented uh, classical works, which to draw, maybe Street Sharks. Oh, <laughs> are you a fan of Street Sharks? Uh, who isn't? <laughs> i didn't i didn't see that on your shelves are you saving those for yourself no they're in the back in the kids section you've got street sharks you've got biker mice from mars the battle toads lva i'm real big into the the animals with abs subgenre for unspecified reasons oh, and okay you should really check them out they're quite good all right it's kind of like a furry on training wheels anyway if you if you have you been to my curse kids section i have the other two fred movies back there oh do you i mean i i figured that you would because of some of the movies that we've picked up from here but um you have got a kid section in in this store as well as a kid section in the store in uh in dallas so that's is the fun thing so I, I i don't know if you've ever wondered why you two can physically be in the same place besides living in separate states but yeah. Every Gimcrack video location is the same Gimcrack video location. We're an evil supernatural store, you see. So if you want to know how to get to the Gimcrack location in your town, there is one, I promise. All you're going to do, pull up your GPS, you're going to go to the dark and forgotten part of your town. You know, where the buildings are empty and the people have moved on. Where hope is left and the shadow of time encroach on the desolate, wasted strip malls. There, in the necropolis of shop fronts, you will feel a cold wind blow in order to hear a whisper of something dreadful. Was it a voice in the wind? Or footsteps? Maybe a scream? Is it a warning? Or an invitation? Should you turn your head to see the source, you will instead find a store you didn't quite see before. But now that you do, the flickering lighted sign looks so inviting. A video store? You don't even remember the last time you saw a video store. But there it is, right here, in your town. It's always been here, waiting. Between the hours of 10 and 8 on Monday through Thursdays, 12 to midnight on Friday and Saturday. Dropbox available when closed. Yeah, it's right next to the uh, Long John Silvers. Yep. I see it. Right there. Yeah, yep. And, of course, and uh, we're always close to a, like a Magic the Gathering shop. We usually collab with them on pizza nights to try and bright, bring business into both things. You know, real, real small business oriented. But yes, every Cream Crack video, same cursed location, easily accessible in your town. Wait, so, uh, wait, was this a, wait, wait, did we just turn this into a plug for your fucking store? You see, that's how you fucking do sponsored content. It's, <laughs> where, 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 where are we right now? Am I in Portland or am I in Dallas? What's going on? You're in Cream Crack video. It exists outside of time. Son of a bitch. So it's kind of like the TARDIS for bad movies. Yeah, the, the the seventh Fred movie is on our shelves. They didn't even make it in your dimension. It's right there. We are a cursed video store. You can get all of the Ass Clown movies. Hmm. All of them. Even the ones they haven't made yet. Even Ass Clown 14? That one's been made. But Ass Clown 17, yes. 
Oh, okay, cool. All right. Uh, that's, maybe I'll watch, make Patrick watch that next time. Excellent films. Highly okay. recommend the Ask Clown franchise. Okay, so it's uh, 20 minutes into the podcast, and we haven't really started talking about this movie yet, so we should probably do that. I don't know if you know how podcasts work here, uh, Gim Crack, but we typically don't promote our own store for 20 minutes. But I have been listening to your show, and I don't think you know how podcasts work. <laughs> Uh, I don't really. Uh, I just, uh, I don't know. I'm surprised you can hear it, honestly. <laughs> so, so, so um, it, 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 we did talk about the, we t- don't think we talk about the, this movie. It starts out by blowing up a beholder. Um, yeah. The movie is the same kind of pace from there. It is a first person narrative in which you are through the eyes of kind of a brigand, very thug like, rogue like fellow who, um, uh, his idea of being witty is sounding like a tv writer trying to sound like guy Ritchie. yeah yeah i could i could see that um here, here's just a just an example of it so people can get the good good feel for it because he uh he he wakes up in a in like a, a prison and there's like this uh half of a carcass of a body that's sitting there of the witch and she's telling him he needs the second element of ice and needs to go to the castle of screams and then he says he says this line is everything in hell fucking medieval so that's his voice that you hear, which I, I like. I like that voice. I wish, uh, yeah, God, Kim Crack, I wish you sounded like that sometimes. Do you want me to have some sort of like third rate Cockney accent? I have uh, my own third rate accent. Thank you very much. You can't even place where it's from. Uh, no. Where are you from anyway? Cleveland. <laughs> oh, all right. It sounded, uh, you must have been from the east side of Cleveland. Kind of sound like it. Oh, you know, it, a lot has happened since the 80s. Yeah. You, you I mean you still remind me of that um, that one guy? Sleep well. Don't forget to brush your teeth. I do take umbrage at that. Yeah, from from another from another movie uh, about a hotel. It was a hospital, but it was kind of like a hotel. Anyway, um, so yeah, so there we are. You got your first person shooter, and um, you you you're seeing, and this is this is. Uh, where the director gets kind of weird because he really just kind of he likes to he likes to make a lot of cuts. <laughs> so he goes into a, a a building, but it's a building that when he was younger and he's having like flashbacks of when he was a kid. Mm-hmm. But now, the, helpfully, they delineate between the current timeline and the previous timeline with a black and white filter. Yeah, it's a little hackneyed, but. It does at least illustrate we are in a different time and place. That and also the dramatic uh, height difference between camera positioning, because now you're a child and you're much shorter. I imagine this is how your co-host sees the world. And uh, so, so you, you, a, a, big, a big adjustment in height, which is kind of cool. Um, now, the thing here is uh, the flashback seems to take place in the same area that the film is taking place in, which really distorts from the whole I'm in hell vibe yeah it's kind of a unique take on hell right so this hell is a cold hell it's it's a cold one guys were doing a cold one well so it's, this it's, part it's, of hell is a cold one right so this mm-hmm. is this this is the ecto chiller part of hell uh, uh sure okay so in the ecto chiller part of hell so the previous one was the fire flames hot part of hell Mm-hmm. And now we're in the ecto chiller part of hell. As everyone mm. knows, if you've read Dante, there's several circles of hell. There's flamey flames, ecto chiller. Um, there's a circle where you just have to watch Seinfeld all of the time, but all of the jokes have been written out, and it's just them just kind of standing around. It's weird. Mm. I, th- I thought that one was the one that was Big Bang Theory, but no laugh track. No, that's that's like the eighth circle okay. of hell. Okay, I, I, uh, it's been a while since I've since you've been to hell. It. Yeah, no, all right. I know, that, that's fair. I don't. I don't go often. I have a summer house there, though, so sometimes I'm able to sneak in. Shocking. I sense some sarcasm here. Yeah. Well, you know, well, what's with the antagonism in our in our dynamic here, Dustin? I thought I was coming to the table in good faith. Yeah. You never do. You, you, you <laughs> say you do. <laughs> I have to come uh, into your shop delightful. and brag, and you know, and and you know, I have to rig an elevator just so Patrick. Gets, I mean, I have to. Uh, try to find Patrick and end up talking to you, and it's, it never goes well. You, you, are you telling me you don't enjoy our little chats? Mm-hmm. So anyway, he goes into this building, and this, and it's you know, you know, I, 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 I it's it's all written like a video game because he needs to get. He sees like the big boss, and he's like, I can't go fight this fucker now. I'm too weak, and I need to be stronger. 
So then he goes and he's like, I need to, I need to level up. So he finds a, a scope. And this is where we learn that every, this is where we start to learn the lore of hell that in order to use things, you have to give it pain. Just like doing a podcast with you brings me pain, but it makes me stronger. Yes, well, your pain is what feeds me and sustains me, as we've established previously. As a supernatural creature, sometimes these things happen. Uh, it, it, it's interesting in t- to think about the supernatural creatures they have in this movie. So the film f- focuses primarily on the one protagonist. Does he have a name? I don't remember hearing it. I want to say it's Frank. All right, so let me be frank. Yeah, it's Frank. Be frank with me. Because you get to be Frank. Oh, I see what you did there. Yes, I'm familiar with porn. So in this POV shot, in in the mechanics of this film, you have Frank and then the witch. The witch is a quadruple amputated corpse. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, Yes, that's the vessel that the witch is using. He ties the witch to his back like a backpack. Now, the function that the witch is, has is in a video game, you need an instructor, a voice to uh, push you forward and to map out what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. I'm familiar with this because I've played Pac-Man World. So what you have here is um, this uh, character... It's a video game stopped been, at Pong. I don't think you're being completely honest with me. You're a gamer, aren't you, Game Crack? Uh, you know, I've been known to dabble in Mahjong. Oh, okay. Bajong soul. I like the souls part. Uh, the function is in a game, you have that kind of like voice to navigate and they're using it here. Uh, the interesting thing though, in the game, it, it's meant to facilitate the rails by which you can interact with the world. Okay, go here, do this thing. Right. It does the same thing here, but also in the absence of any kind of narrative, this is the only thing giving you the semblance of a story is this conversation between the, the witch and, and the Frankie boy. Between the two of them discussing, that's it. That's all you've got. Yeah. You do interact with the other supernatural creatures, most of which are weird Cronenberg flesh goblins. I'm a fan of weird Cronenberg flesh goblins, but these all do tend to look a little samey as we go on. Very like souls born. Yeah, well, it's almost as if you are playing a video game and you come across where there's like the same characters, you know, it's there. I think they, I, I mean, sure, it was probably to save some money, but it could have also been to pay more of a, an homage to video games. When you go into like a level and you fight, you know, 14 of the same guys that look the same, but maybe they have like a color swap to them or something like that. So maybe it's maybe it's intentional um, or maybe it was just to uh, to save money, because when you go into the different rooms and stuff they get different like you get the 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 farmers or whatever the weird dudes the, you get the little crab demon things it, you know, we all return unto crab it's it's evolution's ultimate goal right crabs like, yeah mm. it's crabs mm. is it is it called carcinogenation 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 there's a process by which one becomes crab and ultimately all evolution is working towards this goal i didn't know you were pro crab on this we're, we're not a pro crab co- podcast. We're not a pro crab podcast. Are you anti crab? Have, have I been supporting a bunch of anti crab? <laughs> we're not anti crab. We're just not pro crab. So you're crab centrist, is what I'm hearing right now. Yeah. Yeah. We are right next to a goddamn long John Silvers, and you're coming at me with this crab centrist agenda. I don't even know if I want to be part of this show anymore. You never wanted to be part of it to begin with. Uh, you got me there. Yeah, you just enjoy torture. So that's what we're here for, to torture you. So, um, so yeah, he goes, so, and this is like the first level where he's got to go and there's like these weird demons and the only way he can kill them is to like bash their heads in. So he gets, he bashes their heads in and then the witch, the witch helps guides his hand to making a little headlamp, which is basically a head with, that lights up when you're in a dark room. Really so helpful. You've, you've acquired a new power in your video game journey. Yes, but you have to be careful with this headlamp because it can explode. That's true of most headlamps if you buy them off Timu. Yeah, was this like a documentary for you, or is this not what your version of hell looks like? It depends. All right. So hell's largely like mm, subjective, so it's kind of a vague, quasi-dimensional space where there's a few tent poles of like real object things, and everything else the user creates for themselves once they so once they enter in. So once your damn soul is entered into hell, there's a couple of like actual geographical places, but most of the time, uh, it's it's a personalized experience. Oh, 
designed for you by your subconscious. It's really quite ingenious. But I guarantee there is a gim crack there, a gim crack video there. Uh, so no, not really. So what happened huh. is I don't know if I've told you this story, but do you remember video stores used to be like big? Yeah, like everywhere. And there's one yeah. in every corner. Mm-hmm. So back then, I, I opened up this uh, the original Game Crack video around 1984 or so, right? Okay. Um, and we we did good, good business for quite a while, actually. You know, somewhere in the the mid 2000s, there we start to hit kind of a problem area with the the, vi- the rental industry on the whole, as I'm sure you're aware of. Right? On the whole, yep. And so. You have this huge video crash and stores start dying off in the 90s, but in the mid 2000s, it really starts to really bleed into business. And most of us go under. No one's coming into stores to rent from me anymore because the goddamn, you know, mail in services and streaming, they can just mm-hmm. get what the fuck they want. And it's, it's very stressful. Yeah. And especially for us who spend so much time purveying and curating collections of rare stuff to just have people throw that by the wayside for you know whatever has just been released um but all of my money was wrapped up in this and my business is dying so uh one night i i I say what can i do for this because i'm looking at uh, my business plan and i'm realizing i can't go on for much longer so uh, i think about the you know trying to diversify into video games or restructuring the business um the plan i came up with was to try satan so (laughs) i conjured the devil and he offered me a deal by which i could continue to operate my video store for all time uh it only cost my soul and i really wasn't using it so uh we made the pact and then i instantly became a eternal creature of darkness and my cursed video store was able to be accessed pan-dimensionally across all of time and space and that's how we got here have have you ever uh seen a therapist actually i've been using this this um app service that we promoted on this show better um, than nothing be- better than nothing yeah. um they said i've had a couple of issues and they could help me work through them um at an incremental price plan uh, mm. and that that is um the first session the first 10 minutes are one price and each additional minute is a different price oh that sounds like uh that sounds a lot like one of those 1900 numbers we used to have back in the day is 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 there is there anybody named Miss Cleo that you're calling up by any chance? No, no, okay. no. I don't believe in anything like divination or okay. any of that stuff. I uh, I I use chicken entrails for that. Um, how how does that work? You gut a chicken and you you spread the entrails out, and then it will tell you the future. I didn't know how to do any of this before I became a cursed uh, supernatural creature of the night. It's really been quite uh, beneficial. Yeah, I mean, did did you have to do it in the store? It kind of stinks. I wasn't going to bring this up, but have you showered since your friend went missing? No, no, I've 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 been uh, I've been worried. Um, yeah. And I had a couple strip clubs, but I've been worried mostly. I'm thinking that's less to do with the chicken and more to do with you. By the way, are there plot sensitive chickens in this? There are some chickens in this. We'll get, well, oh, we're almost to the chicken part. There are um, plot critical chickens. Yes. Uh, yes. So, uh, but before we get to the chickens, we have, he gets his pistol, his first gun that he gets to have in this Uh movie game whatever you want to call it and the the thing about the guns in hell is that they run on pain it is a self-reloading gun um but in order for you to load it and to get it only holds one bullet at a time and it requires pain to reload it so he either has to cause somebody else pain or cause himself pain and there's a little eyeball that lights up and lets you know hey you've got a bullet ready to go but it's only one bullet at a time. And if you shoot somebody, apparently that pain doesn't count. It has to be pain caused by something else besides that. So how erect was Clive Barker when he wrote this? Hey, it's Patrick from the future here in the editing booth doing this week's ad read. And if you're thinking, how am I alive right now after getting crushed to death in a notorious Portland pissivator? Well, I have this week's sponsor to thank. I know a lot of podcasts get plugs from nutrient-based meal replacement drinks like Huel or Huel. And we have also been enjoying a health-based meal alternative high in protein and in energy. And that is Professor Boris's patented riboflavin-flavored, non-carbonated, polyunsaturated blood. This blood alternative isn't just for vampires anymore. You too can get all the benefits of drinking blood like a creature of the night with none of the drawbacks in this healthy, 
soy-based blend alternative. Use our promo code SHELF for a 20% price hike on your first order. Professor Boris's patented riboflavin flavored, non carbonated, polyunsaturated blood. Also, this week we have a second sponsor who is proud to be bringing you candy corn butt plugs. Well, I guess that's one way to finally get people excited about candy corn. We have fun here. <laughs> Well, someone does. Um, <laughs> Mostly Clive. Yeah, lots of, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so now that he's got his gun, he's got to go to the, uh, the, the witch tells him, now you need to go and visit the alchemist. Because, of course, why wouldn't you have an alchemist? So uh, he uses like this little triangular portal thingy to travel to get the alchemist, and he goes in there, but the alchemist isn't there, and he's attacked by a bunch of weird uh, crab demons. And oh, we forgot to mention he he is missing uh, his right arm uh, or his right hand. I forgot to tell you that it did get bitten off in the end of part two by a, another fire demon of some sort bit his his hand off. So at this point, he takes the witch and he hacks the witch's hand off and then puts it on his own hand. Cause, so now he can have witch strength in his hand. I think witch strength is a new bath and body work scent for this Halloween. Yeah, it's a great candle, too. Mm -hmm. It's shaped like a hand. It's got five burners, five wicks for five fingers. Yeah, like and you burn it, it looks like blood's dripping down. It's really cute. We've just invented a product I would actually buy. That You've never heard of that before? No. Maybe not the scent, but they've got little hand candles, and you burn the wicks, and it lights down, and it looks like blood dripping down the fingers. It's quite It's quite quaint. I have to try some. Yeah. Yeah, now if it could only smell like the anus egg of a chicken, that would be, it'd be nice. Dustin, I sometimes worry about the things that come out of your mouth. Nah, you should worry about the things that go into it, too. Um, so, so, so the I, 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 no, no, hold on. <laughs> I, I, need to, I need to address this. In the absence of Patrick, do you feel the need to fill the space with homoerotic jokes? <laughs> Someone's got to. Fair. <laughs> so we get a, we get a fight. Uh, another another little like mini boss battle between Frank, uh, you and the uh, the alchemist, and he's putting a little green magic spelly thingy on you and blah blah blah, and he bites your arm and he's you know you try to fight but uh, you break the spell, you beat him up a little bit, and then he uh, he respects you for bringing him pain. Right? I, every time you say something like that, this movie just sounds more and more like someone's idea of a fetish. Like it's not shot like that; it's shot like a video game. If you were to break down the specifics of how said game function, one one test. I would I would actually play this game. It feels very much like um. <sighs> There was a God of War ripoff where you played as Dante mm -hmm. going through hell. And I feel like this movie is doing a riff on that. I don't remember the name. I think it's like Dark. It was it was a combination of Death, Souls, Shadows, Dark, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And, and, and it put it in a blender, put it on a, a T-shirt, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but that that was, I can't remember the exact date, but that was the premise is you're Dante, you're going through hell, but it's a God of War style of game. And that feels like what this is. Yeah, kind of. I could I could definitely see that. Although it does have more Doom shotguns. Yeah. And speaking of shotguns, he's going to have to actually get a shotgun here now because uh, the alchemist sends him to go get the, you know, like they're like, okay, well, the pistol was fine and all, but you only get one shot. Uh, you're going to need something a bit stronger than that. So... Um, we need you to go into the Castle of Screams and get a shotgun. But the thing about this shotgun is the shotgun can be upgraded. And it's kind of, I guess there's uh, chickens in the castle and and he hears it. And the, Go on, you're doing a great job. Keep talking. The, the witch is like, don't worry, there's, there's no chickens here. But then there are chickens. Um, uh, I don't, let's see. Ah. Uh, Describe the chickens. See if you could describe them. I, the chickens? Yeah. What do they look like? I had a fever when I was watching this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think you always run a little hot there. <laughs> and I'm not well, just I, talking I, about your fashion sense. Thank you. I, uh -huh. you know, I work very hard. Um, I'm in LA Fitness 
every day, mm-hmm. every other, every, you know, you know, alternating, you know, yeah, arm day, leg day. I want to make sure that I'm a very well-rounded, corpse-looking individual. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it that it pays off, and I get to keep this this demonic physique yeah. in top form. Um, it is slightly rotting, so it it helps to know that I am uh, uh, doing my job. Giant chickens. The giant. They have like the, the everything in this movie is flesh colored. Yeah. Yes. Um. Th- so it's this giant tumor like chicken with like. Did it have a tail? Um. Not really a tail. Uh. It had kind of a, a little little tiny stump back there. Oh um, yes. But it had it had uh. Like when you when you watch the alien movie and you saw that whole nest full of alien eggs, kind of like that on its chest. Yeah, like a proboscis thing. Yeah, but the chest eggs are just a distraction. The real eggs are located in their ass. And he has to dig an egg out of a demon chicken ass. Dustin, why does this exist? I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. It's... Why don't you have it on your shelf? Is the real question. Yeah, it does seem like an oversight. I feel like this this could drive a person to madness. So I'm going to have to place an order later today. Yeah, I think you might. Oh, and then it, then it, when it, after he takes the uh a, the 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 ass egg out of the chicken, he gets attacked by uh, a different giant chicken demon thingy um, who uh, attacks him with a long uh, appendage out of the front of him punctures his stomach with it and then uh frank rips it off and says <laughs> I fucking ripped his dick off. ah frank such a charming individual yes I fucking uh, ripped his, he dick rips his dick off which causes the chicken to go kamikaze and blows up in a ball of green slime uh, the chicken scene was probably one of the more disturbing scenes, I think, in this movie. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a little out of place. Yeah, he's, it's he 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 like puts on gloves and crushes the egg, squeezes it all over him. The entirety of this film, for the most part, outside of this scene, is going for like M-rated video game vibes, but like an action game vibe, like pro gamer shit, right? Yeah. This segment is from a trauma movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a little poultry geistish. And it's incongruous with the rest of the film. Well, I mean, she's got to go through the different parts of, of hell, and he's got to get the shotgun from the demon chickens. There's no part of hell in which you get impregnated by chickens. I've been there many times. This is complete fabrication. Well, you haven't been to the fun parts, my friend. Hmm. Let me tell you about this place that Patrick and I went to when we were down there. Oh, my God. And the tacos? Oh, delightful. So he puts on a glove, crushes the egg, squeezes all the egg juice all over him so that the egg, that the other chickens won't recognize him to where, and now he wants to, he's got the shotgun, so he wants to add more ammo to the shotgun to get, to what has three bullets. So he has to go and poke the eyes out of a head thingy floating on the wall. And he's got to wade through a bunch of uh, chickens reenacting the bathtub scene from Saltburn and goes and grabs eyes off of the... So now he's got a shotgun with uh, three bullets in it. Did I miss anything there? Would it be good? No, it's just when you say it like that, that is what happened. Nothing wrong with uh, chickens swimming in white goo at all. Nothing weird about that. It is... um... (laughs) It is the KFC marinade. <laughs> That's the real secret of urban spice. So he goes, um, and now, so he's got the shotgun. It's three, but he's also got his little scope from earlier. And now you can put the scope on the shotgun and it becomes a sniper rifle. We're talking awesomeness here. So now he's got the sniper rifle, but one sniper rifle shot counts as three normal bullets. So He's got these weird screamers in the castle that he's got to shoot. And as he puts his sniper and shoots them, he's got to like stab himself in between the shots to to reload his sniper. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of neat. That's kind of fun. <laughs> I, like, I like the claws. So like in this, this set of mm-hmm. the castle, the castle of screams is more or less just like a stone structure. And it's got bars on the windows and the, the grasping the bars of these things that they're calling screamers, God help Bre- us. Breaking news, Gimcrack says that a castle is a stone structure. Anyway, continue. I'm sensing some degree of sarcasm no, here. No, not on my end. Hmm. They have, anyway, grasping the, the bars are these 
claws. So you don't actually see the monsters. You just see the claws grasping the boss. And I liked that. That's probably one of my favorite things in this entire fiasco of film. Is this, these little creatures, you don't actually see them. You just see the, the, the claws grasping and the just eye boss. And then exploding in the blood when they get shot. There's a lot of practical effects. Uh, there's a lot of CGI mixed into it, but there's a lot of practical effects. In this, there's movie. A, this movie is, is a lot of practical effects. It, it seems like it was constructed primarily of practical effects and um, Blender and using those two things. Yeah. Yeah, that's your, it's probably, probably close to being right there on that. You can you can do a lot with Blender. If you, I don't know if you've watched any of the... I don't know if you go on the YouTubes. Do you go on the YouTubes? Um, it, might not, yes. it might be different for you. It's not a thing that a lot of older people do, but the young people, they go on the YouTubes, so... Yes, we go on the YouTubes. So on the YouTubes, there's um this there's this this teenager who's been making these movies called like the Backrooms. You've heard, you know it's of the off the old memes and shit. Mm-hmm. I think Kane Pixels. Oh, I could be wrong, um, but they did a sequel. They did a they did a, a, a different series after that, and it's called the Oldest View. Have you seen this? Have you heard about this? I've not. I have not. Okay, so the oldest view, I don't know what it's about yet. <laughs> There's like four or five videos, but one of them is around 40 minutes long, 40, 50 minutes long. It's called Part 3. And it's about this guy who finds a mall underground. Okay. And he's chased around by this giant mannequin thing. The mall, it's a found footage film from his person's POV. It's shot entirely from this, like, like, like it's camcorder perspective, right? Mm-hmm. However whole thing is shot inside this mall. This mall is a mall in Dallas that doesn't exist anymore. The entire thing is built in Blender and looks completely real. Hmm. All check right. it out. No yeah. view. It's better. Th- if, you ha- if you want to watch a POV film and you only have like an hour to waste, mm-hmm. much better use of your time watching this in the first hour of Hotel Inferno 3. Mm, I, 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 and maybe I disagree, but... Ooh, hot take. <laughs> I will have to check that out. But yeah, so the the people hanging uh, the claws sticking out of the castle are the are the screamers, hence the castle of screams. These are the screamers, and the screamers are screaming so that they can sedate the uh, ice monster thingy, whatever the hell his name was. Uh, and that's the thing. So he has to kill the screamers so that the ice monster dude will wake up, so then he can kill the ice monster and get the ice uh, element. Mm-hmm. Then the ice monster is a giant ogre. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, but but before he gets to the ice monster, he needs to. The witch tells him that he needs to get a, a harpoon. He had another weapon that we need to go get. So he goes back to the alchemist and he starts throwing up blood and giving birth to uh, baby demon chickens, which he promptly kills. Various methods: twisting their heads off, stomping on them. At this at this point, again, again, video game structure. Um, each he goes through hell through doors, so each door functions as a level. He keeps going back to the alchemist hut because it's a centralized location in which he can upgrade his gear and get more items. Correct? Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Okay. Yes. So, yeah. so now we're next... getting a new item. We're getting a harpoon. So... So, to, so to do this, he has another side mission where he has to go into the depths of some forbidden part of hell. It's all darkness with another giant monster in it? Yeah, this one's got the weird blue LED lights and... Um, uh, yeah, and, and I don't know. It's it's just a, a, a thing, and he ends up like uh, slashing the demon's neck, and then the demon starts drinking his own blood, and then we get a new piece of lore called the Blood Drunken, in which uh, if a demon drinks the blood of another demon or his own blood, he becomes an unpredictable demon, as if they were predictable in the first place. Well, you know, most demons aren't, but a couple of demons, you can kind of get their routine. You know, they're going to spend every Saturday night watching this, you know, watching SNL and then turn into bed early. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. But the cool thing is, is once you kill a blood drunken, uh, the weapon that you kill him with becomes enchanted and more powerful. Mm. So that's fun. And um, yeah, he goes back to uh, he he makes a void bag out of the uh, demon's head. Let's see. The void bag carries any object that you put into it so you can carry more things. But, you know, it's hell. So the more things that you carry, the more pain that you feel. And I, I actually kind of like this element for a for a video game. Like imagine if you've got like a if you've got an inventory system, but the more crap you put in there, you can put as much stuff as you want. But the more stuff you put in there, the more like your health starts to slowly go down. 
I think that's actually kind of a cool little uh, thing that I've never seen in a game. I don't think I've seen that either. It's cool. Though. Well, you don't play any games that are made in the last 30 years, so I don't think you would have. But I'm I'm saying this more for our audience's behalf, for our, our thousands of listeners out there. Right, right, of course. Yes, no, there's no pain delivery system in Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Yes. Zombie Ate Your Anus? What? Zombies Ate My Neighbors? Oh, Neighbors. Okay, neighbors. so I was, I, was, I was thinking of your, your POV line from earlier. Um, so the Doesn't, demon... What? I, I, I I I I want to address the un the, the 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 sexual tension between us. We really have to resolve this. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm just not into it. Uh, I don't. I have no idea what you're. I'm in about. a committed relationship with my VCR, and this is just, just nothing is going to come from this. I'm sorry. Speaking of, um, <laughs> the, the alchemist hands him a bottle of Christ urine. But it's not really Christ urine. It's not. It's just acid. But they just call it Christ urine because, you know, they're in hell. It's, you know, a little silly. They don't like humor down there. But, you know, they're like, they don't like humor. They don't like sarcasm. I just thought it was a new men's cologne fragrance. Mmm. The smell of Christ urine. An ammonia forward scent. Yes. The smell that brings all the boys to their knees. So... So back to the movie. I'm making fun of your voice. Um, all right, uh, Christ here, and yeah. So he, 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 for some reason, there's something with drinking the demon's blood out of a bone chalice, and he puts on this helmet. So now he's like, he's gearing up. He's got all his final shit going on. Um, Are you saying that he's put on the full armor of God? Well, I wouldn't. I don't know if it's God, but he does put on the full armor. Death to video drone. Long live the new flesh. We're almost. We're almost at the end here. We've almost made it. Um, ice demon. Um, and he's trying to like blast away at the ice demon, and there's these like keepers that keep attacking him. So he's got to like go back and forth between shooting the ice demon and then stabbing one of the keepers and stabbing himself and shooting the ice demon again and stabbing a bunch of people and shooting them and stabbing. There's a lot of shit going on here at the end. So yeah, so the, the final boss structure is based, built into uh, fighting the big bad while managing being attacked by his minions. Yeah, no, I, I, I and but I, I do also like the cause pain to yourself or to others with melee weapons to increase your ammunition. That's fun. There's a lot of elements in this that I would actually like to see in a in a first person shooter game. That would be, uh, be cool. maybe their ultimate goal is to try and make an indie an indie shooter after this. <laughs> well, did you read ahead? <laughs> <laughs> I got uh, not an indie shooter though, but uh, we're, we're, we'll get there. He gets the harpoon. He climbs up a cliff. He yells "motherfucker" and drops the uh, the head lantern from the very beginning of this whole fine story. Mm-hmm. He knew that would come back. He drops it onto the demon and basically it explodes him and kills him. And he gets his little ice thing. Yay. But we're not done with Frank just yet because uh, he goes back because he couldn't take the witch with him during this part because, you know, you just can't do that because you got to have the point where the hero's on his own. So that's what happens here. And um, he goes into this little side room and it's his his mother is like chained up to this thing and in order for him to get the full eye symbol uh he's gotta rip her face off because the ice is a symbol of sadness and something else and the only way he can't just kill his his mom he's gotta rip her face off face off yep yeah so he does that rips her face off gets it <clears throat> now he learns that he needs to collect uh, all five of these elements in order to resurrect himself and his wife. He's got fire. He's got ice. Uh, next upcoming uh, looks like the forest. So we're going to have uh, we're going to have that. And then uh, who knows? I, I think it might I, be right on with wind and heart coming afterwards. You know, it's um, or it's, it's going by bionicle rules and like water is separate than ice. Oh, it could be. Could that could be. But at the end of this movie, the the witch ends up uh, merging with Frank. So now instead of being this thing on his back, he's actually she it is actually a part of him. Dun, dun, dun. And there you go. And that was uh, that was a hotel. Hotel Inferno three castle of screams. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Justin, did you like this movie? I did. I, 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 it's, it's, it's entertaining. It's a lot to kind of sit through, but it's, it's fun. You know, what's really cool is, um, is I did, uh, I, I watched this movie on a VR virtual reality headset. So it was like a hundred inch screen right in front of my eyes. So it was kind of like I was living the movie. Yeah, you're going to have to tr- tell me if in a violent year gives you the same kind of experience. No, I'm sorry, in a, in a violent nature. Mm, yeah, I will, I will definitely check that out. But hopefully I won't get uh, fucked by a chicken when I watch that one. Did you get fucked by a chicken? I mean... I mean, I, I didn't. We watched it right here. I'm fine. Oh, uh, what would? What, I've, no, this that was like the fifth time I've watched this movie. So I, I watched it with Patrick. Well, you know, a while ago when we were gonna before the whole thing at the hotel and the elevator thing happened, we watched it. Um, and then I watched it. Uh, uh, I watched it back at home on the VR, and I watched it on the airplane, and I watched it um, in hell while you were getting fucked by a chicken. No, 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 no. I watched it at uh, a dance recital, a children's dance recital. Um, they kicked me out because they were like, you can't watch this stuff in here, but you know, whatever. Oh, okay, okay. Interesting, interesting. Um, I, I just don't think it was that immersive for me. <laughs> it wasn't immersive enough for you? You didn't? <laughs> I felt no chicken fucking. I will, uh, mm. Here, put on these goggles and I'll show you what I watched. So, uh, so Game Crack, that was, that was, uh, Hotel Inferno 3. I do have a question for you. How much of your business do you run off crypto coin? So it's really funny you say that. I personally don't profit from any kind of crypto, crypto transactions. However, um, by telling crypto bros that I accept Bitcoin, they'll come in here and they'll rent something. And my business is done by causing pain and suffering and then reaping the pain and suffering I I cause, right? And then ultimately you're mortal souls, right? And the devil gets a cut of that. The cost of being a supernatural creature. So I do have a sign over here that says cryptocurrency accepted in case it lures uh, crypto bros in and I can then, you know, get their souls. However, it hasn't accomplished anything because no, no one's going to no no none of them is spending any of that money they're all doing something they call hodl which i assume is a sex position but um does it really come up mm, okay because i was wondering you have to get that crypto atm over there but it says that there is a oh no that, that's crypt no oh, that, that's, crypt oh that's just okay. a crypt yeah no that's for my dead customers now you can go in there that's fine oh okay crypt oh 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 it is oh that's where you you, that's where you buried the Irish guy, O'Coin. Going back to this movie, we've got our cast. I could tell you a little bit. There's, there wasn't a, a heck of a lot of backstories involved, if you can believe it. The 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 person that played the witch uh, was a lady named Sarah T. Cohen, and she has been in a lot of these types of movies. She was in... Uh, I don't know if you have any of these movies on your shelves. The Legend of Jack and Jill, Easter Bunny Massacre, Curse of Humpty Dumpty 2. I don't know if I have the Jack and Jill movies. I do have the Easter Bunny Massacre. Oh, okay. Yeah, so th- those she was uh, she was in all those. She's in a lot of uh, that particular kind of really bloody kind of knockoff movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, yes, and the... There, so this this part three was uh, had a had a had a partner team up of director and writer uh, that also did part two and three together. The director just did part one by himself, but um, the one that person that he brought on for parts two and three was uh, Tiziana Macelli, um, who is I don't know if they're uh, partners or what, but she's been in just about everything that he's done since part two of this and um he played frank's mom that got her face ripped off interesting interesting but let's get to the director giello del di santi so di santi um did you ever see adam chaplin i i'm not familiar okay well, now i know another movie to watch with you um adam chaplin is another one i actually have not watched it but it is pretty much in kind of the same vein of the hyper violent bloody gory stuff it's just not a first person shooter um he that was his first movie um his second movie he did was another one called well, i think hotel inferno might have the second one but he did uh another movie called tater city which is about 
a futuristic civilization in which um, everybody's a cannibal, apparently. And <laughs> it's it's I, I tried to watch it. It was kind of hard uh, to to get through and not because it's cannibals, just because it's it's a, it's a lot like it's it's very cut, like kind of like how this movie is very you know, cut from scene to scene to scene, but it kind of makes sense when it's done first person style. When it's done as an overall narrative, it's it's fine for like the first couple of minutes as we you tell me the history of this story, but then as it keeps going on, you're like, okay, okay. So Goddard, Goddard in his film Breathless, part of the French New Wave, the point, part of the pop, uh, the experiment with this film was to not have like continuity shots between scenes. So it's like shot, 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 shot. Oh, I like that song. But it's a more artistic film. Now, it's not, I would say, the best written in terms of, like, female representation. It's... Mm, no. But uh, but the film from the 60s does this a little bit more artistically than what I think you're, you're suggesting. Because what they that one is, you know, of course, like the story of an outlaw. And... Um, Kind of just his his um, his overall journey over one weekend as he's on the lamb and then he he he, um, he goes he's kind of in hiding and he touches base with an old flame and things like that. Um, this film probably does something similar in its cut structure, but instead, I'm assuming more like a hamster on cocaine. Yeah, mm -hmm. hamster on cocaine. That's that's it. It sounds about right. Um, Maybe it maybe it switches away from that. Maybe it's just the beginning stuff. Um, I will try to attempt to watch it, but it's trying to be like a like a manga almost. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, there's a sequel to that as well called Tater Burger. So if you'd like to watch that, that just came out last year. So it's uh, he he does these really really violent over the top movies that are just like this this genre. He had another one called like the Mildew of Zaxanud something or other. I forget what it's called. Are they are they, are they all very similar? Well, they're done mostly in Blender, so you can do it with very little crew. Y yeah, it looks like it from what I've seen. Um, mm -hmm. well, yeah, but he does put a lot of the um, uh, practical effects. So you know, all right. So um, back, this is kind of an interesting little story about him. You mentioned the video game stuff. So back when he released uh, Adam Chaplin, he released it in, in English, even though he is an Italian gentleman. And so he, he did in English and he did not do an Italian dub of it. He just released the English dub. And because he knew that the English one, because the Italian movie market is not the most profitable market out there right now. So he's like, let me just focus on the English market. And we, we really do have to do a deep dive into the Italian film uh, industry, uh, pr probably more in the 70s and the 80s. Yeah. But um, it's, it's, it's just a wild right. ride. So he... Um, what I'm saying is you should, guys should record here more often. I think it's a good idea for future endeavors. You know, come in. I've got room in the basement. I mean, in the back. And I think that it's a, it's a, it could be a good recording. I think you're space. just lonely. You just like the company. Uh, I have I have the suffering of to damn souls to keep me company, okay. but um, you you said all these stores are connected, right? Yes, and so you've got one of these in every city, and you know we it's all the same store, but it's in okay. every city. And we we watched the movie, which was about an hour and a half, and we've been talking for a little bit over an hour and two and a half hours. Cities all around the the world. And not a single customer's popped in here yet. Yeah, okay. you know, it, 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 listen, one soul makes up for a lot of ah, business. Okay, I, I, I wasn't sure that supply and demand uh, exchange rate there, so that's good to know. Um, so when he was releasing Adam Chaplin, he did it in English, he knew that it would sell better, but he wanted to try a, a different uh, marketing strategy. So what he did was he released a, uh, a, a, in quotes, a very offensive interview proclaiming that we would never release a movie in Italian because that country sucks. Oh, that's a bold choice. Yes. And it, um, the, the reaction, uh, a lot of people were, were offended and they started to insult him and hate him and sales increased uh, at a rate of over 300%. There's no such thing as bad attention. Or sorry, bad. Publicity. Yeah. So he's uh, he got the he got the word out that he wanted to. So then he started. Unless of course you're getting publicity for being a couch fucker. That is bad. There's no way to spend no, that. No. Yeah. We that is that is one 
So anyway, uh, this guy, uh, DeSanti, wrote, uh, he decided to work on a, on a uh, video game. So it was a, but it was a fighting game, like Mortal Kombat style. And it was blended with uh, like actual like video of people like during the death scenes and stuff. So it was kind of a neat idea. And it was a game called Death Cargo. So I don't have a, a whole lot of, I don't want to go way into Death Cargo. But what he did was essentially he, he hyped the game up huge, um, but wouldn't really release a lot of information about it. So people started to think that maybe the game wasn't real. So then he started to sell a couple of copies, very limited edition to some people. And um, he intentionally sold them ones that would like load up a little bit, but then they would stop working. So they would have to contact him and say, hey, this shit's not working that you sold me. What's the deal with that? And he's like, well, I sold it to you at a discount. It's not ready yet. You'll have to download a patch. And the patch didn't actually go to anything. And it didn't, it didn't work. And he refused to refund money to the people that did pay, but he did give them a discount. So it was like, you know, it wasn't much that they paid, but he refused to give them any money. Um, he would set up, he set up some fake website forums and um, he teamed up with Kotaku and did like fake articles about it just to build up all this rage and hate against him. I'm going to say, it doesn't, he kind of sounds a little bit like a dick I so far. I would not be surprised if that was his uh his situation um he he's probably not the i mean he's trolling for money uh for his own for his own good so so yeah they ended up renaming the the story i think it's called like gore breaker now uh with the movie but it's um it's going to be available uh it's you know it's um i guess you can buy it i don't know if it's really or not but bottom line he 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 likes to uh, build up all these troll and anger things against him because it knows it increases uh, viewership. So, so just stop watching, stop spreading all this hateful crap because then you get guys like this making death cargo. Rage baiting as a form of engagement. Mm. Yeah, it's it's as dumb as doing bits on a podcast. It's just it never it doesn't it doesn't work. Yeah, you, 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 you know, I'm so glad you guys are past doing mm -hmm. bits. Well, I didn't. The show's the show's so much better without I thought bits. So. Yeah. I have to say. Uh, so yeah. So um, is that the reason you sent Patrick on the piss of yeah. He's just like, like we're tired of the fucking yes. bits. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, you know, take the piss of to hell, and I'm gonna go talk to Game Crack for a bit. Well, uh, um, well, you know what, Game Crack? Let me ask you a question. In a way, I brought you here to offer you a job. You think you can do it better? So here's your chance. Okay, so. Three things. Uh, you're a, you're one of our biggest fans of the podcast. So I'm sure you know how this works. You have to change three things about this movie, but you can only change three things about this movie to uh, make it better, uh, more watchable, more universally accepted uh, type film. What do you do? Where do you begin changing things in a in a feature that's structured in this way? Yeah, not my job. I think we need more beholders. Okay, they're just cool. Yeah, more beholders. Okay. Everywhere. Change number one. Change number two. I hate this fucking guy. I hate this guy. His voice irritates me. His one-liners are terrible. So I... I fucking written yeah, okay. dick off. So I would like better written one-liners. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like serious you know, Sam, but need it. with, uh, you know, actual funny lines and stuff. Yes, that's what okay. I'm looking for. Um, so if we could get that... Then a third thing, mm -hmm. I think I do away with all the flashbacks. They don't seem to add anything. I yeah, I agree. I I think you could have just said at the end that it's his mom. We didn't need the flashbacks to really show, and it didn't really show her doing much. I don't know what the hell she was really even doing. She was massaging a chicken before boiling it in a pot. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Sure. She took out a, a raw chicken. She gave it to him. They massaged it together, and she put it in a pot. This was supposed to be a touching mother-son moment, and all of this is done without dialogue. And you're like, "What am I watching right now?" Get back to the heavy metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because it's like it's, but it's not really necessarily even supposed to be the the heartwarming moment. It's supposed to be that this is why my mom is such a bitch and I'm going to have to rip her face off because she's the source of all my sadness because she massaged a chicken. 
You're right. You're right. Give me right, right. this, this, Kim, Kim Crook's right. Put it on a t-shirt. Sell the merch. Good. Show's Kim Crook did nothing right? wrong. Are we done here? Hashtag Kim Crook did nothing wrong. <laughs> Remember, you heard it here first, folks. Patrick, there you are. Um, yeah, we were we were just talking about you here. Yeah, I um, it's just really weird. I, I was riding an elevator and um, the piss evader. Some, yeah, the, the evil mm-hmm. piss evader. Um, anyway, it plummeted to my death, and I wound up and I think it was hell, but it was like the sign on the wall said a hotel, and it was like a video game with heavy metal music, and I had to go through this weird BDSM journey where I was shooting people with Cronenberg guns. I wound up busting into the doors to the throne room of hell, and there was Satan, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing here? You're not allowed here. And he snapped his fingers, and I'm back. Um, and my first thought was, wasn't I just drinking with Dustin? How did this happen? Yeah, you know, it might have just been a, a, a fever dream. But I, I, I decided to stop by Game Cracks. Yeah, it's where we usually go when we got nothing else to do. You know, again. Uh, <laughs> well, you, 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 you kind of missed out on everything here, Patrick. I, I made you watch this movie, but um, I just sat and talked to Kim Crack about it. So I, 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 we kind of did all the whole podcast. Is there anything that you needed to add to it? No, I, 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 I kind of just came back to life no? a little, a little out of it. Okay. Oh, you, you know what though? I, I did have there's there was one thing about this movie that um that you particularly might find uh interesting. I don't know if so does the name uh Rainer Burton sound familiar to you at all? Um no. Okay. That, well, that's the gentleman that plays Frank, you, the guy um the guy with the the gritty voice that uh Gimcrack doesn't seem to like. I don't know why he didn't like such lines like I fucking ripped his dick off. If you're going to keep playing that clip, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. Prepare to beat off. God damn it. Every episode. Oh. <clears throat> okay, so uh, enough of you, Game Crap. Patrick, um, I'm going to play a song for you. And I want you to let me know if this song rings a bell to you in particular. Ready? Here we go. <laughs> recognize that song i don't know which recording that is but yeah that's obviously the sort of damocles from um from from rocky horror yes that is the original london cast performance of the rocky horror show and that was rocky with the extremely high voice singing it you see the guy doing this rainer burton the guy that does frank was the first person to play rocky horror that's crazy. I actually did not know that. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't listen to the the original uh, sh- uh, recording that much because it actually changes quite a bit. So most of the time, I'm listening to the Roxy cast. Um, but that's pretty awesome. So yeah, um, the guy with the deep gravelly <laughs> saying things like "Is everything in hell fucking medieval?" Uh, is also the guy that was singing with the high pitched voice as Rocky. That was all. well. You know, I'm I'm glad you stopped by because I, I I was hoping. I didn't think Gimcrack would give a shit about that fact, but uh, I knew you would. I don't think Gimcrack's a fan of Rocky Horror, but he might be. Who isn't a fan of great cinema? Mm. Okay, yeah, so he is a fan. All right, um, well, you know what? I think, um, unless you got anything else to add or if you got any questions about this movie. How did I get here? No? I'm, I'm so confused. <laughs> I, 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 uh, there was g- girl, you got girl drink drunk again. Both of you get the fuck out of my store. Grab, grab one of the rentals from the three for a dollar and be gone. I have other customers, you know. No, you don't. Let's grab two movies. All right. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of Found. Stop push. I'm, I'm, I'm going. Out, out, uh, this out. episode of Found on Shelf. No, if, if you enjoyed this podcast, uh, please remember to like, subscribe, rate, share. Stop by your local Gimcrack. Uh, you can check us out, foundonshelfpod.com, where uh, you can leave voicemails, send feedback, listen to all of our shows on there. And um, yeah, that's about all we got. So I guess we'll see you. Uh, we got one more episode coming out for Halloween. No, two more episodes coming out for Halloween. So yeah, be sure to check back for our weekly Halloween episodes. You got anything else to say, Gimcrack? Yes. Um, for with every 10th rental, get one rental free. Closed on Sundays.
why does it sound like like the the start <laughs> menu from a nineteen ninety nine like Duke Nukem ripoff in here? I mean, that's that's accurate. They're going source. They're going source material on that. That's good. All right. Well, that's an episode. <laughs>